While classrooms across Eastern North Carolina stand empty and students and teachers are tucked away at home, we know a great secret. Learning can happen anywhere. In fact, learning can happen everywhere. Welcome to Eastern Carolina Education Connection, a partnership with WNCT and Pitt County Schools. We're here to connect and reconnect with students, teachers, parents, and community during this unique and remarkable time in our state's history by helping you learn from right where you are. Hi friends, it's Miss Ashley, your host for Eastern Carolina Education Connection. Today's episode has to do something with what's ever on this table and a good friend I have back here. So I'm thinking maybe we're talking about pirates today. Um, our book that we're looking at is Jackie LaRue, Boy Pirate. It's written by Jay Annis, an author that lives right down the street from us in Farmville, North Carolina. And hopefully we'll be able to check in and you can maybe see his face and hear from him. We're gonna learn how to write a letter maybe to some authors and see if maybe we can get Mr. Annis to write us back. We've got two teachers today, Christy Madison, second grade from HB Sug, and we have Lori Moore, a kindergarten teacher also from HB Sug, and they both graduated from East Carolina University, so they are pirates, arg. Um, and this afternoon, we're gonna be looking at a wiggle break with one of our PE teachers from Pitt County, and we've got a sweet little minute at the end where we can check in with one of our counselors. So I'm really looking forward to today's episode. I love pirates. Let's see what we can learn how to be a pirate today. Hey friends, I'm Miss Madison and I'm a teacher at HB Sug in Farmville. And we have all been out of school because of the virus. And so what we wanted to do was bring you a special story. And we have a story, Jackie LaRue, Boy Pirate. And this is by a local author that you may know, Mr. J. Annes. And in this story, Jackie LaRue learns a valuable lesson. He has lots of adventures that he takes, but he's missing something. And we're going to read to find out what that is. And he dedicates this book. He says, to my little ladies, it was you and only you who gave the world Mr. Jackie LaRue. And his two daughters actually go to school with us in Farmville. Before there was Blackbeard and Pirates of the Like, there lived the most incredible famous young child. He became a pirate at the earliest age, and this is the first time his story has been pinned to a page. That means written about. I know who you... I know you were thinking, who is he, who, who? He goes by the name of Jackie LaRue. And here's Jackie right here. You see, being a pirate is somewhat of an art. And here's how Jackie LaRue got his start. Well, his mom loved the sea, had a boat named Kazoo, and his dad was a sailor in year 22. It ran in their blood, which ran into his, so it was only right that Jackie ended up in the biz. That means he became a sailor, too. It started before birth, if you must know. In his mom's belly, he would put on a show. He made a big fuss while cooking inside, tossing and turning with the flow of the tide. Up and down he would glide as if riding on air. Dreams of ships and high seas is his only care. And here's Jackie LaRue's mom. Look, she's pregnant. He's in her belly. Jackie's birth, it turned out, was just the first surprise of a life filled with sailing and starry night skies. You see, he had cooked a bit too long, three weeks overdue, and his mom was quite ready to push him on through. It was the height of the season and the, fi and the fish bite was hot. She loaded her boat and untied the knot. She hooked up a marlin and began the long fight. Jackie jostled or moved around. I guess it felt right. Jackie LaRue wanted out right then, right then and there. His mom got busy and wasn't aware. With a push and a tug and a slug and a slip, he was born right there on the deck of a ship. He was born on a ship. He popped right out with his wonderful sight, grabbed the rod from her hand with all of his might. He wrestled that marlin an hour or two and landed him clean on the deck of Kazoo. So as soon as he was born, he caught a big fish. This is called a marlin. Jackie was born with one eye and only one leg, but they fixed him right up with a patch and a peg. 
His first gift was a parrot, fresh from the nest. They decked him all out with a hat and a vest. With no rhyme or reason, he was named Tuffin McGee. The bird was hooked to Jackie, like Jackie to the sea. And there's his bird, Tuffin. At two, he had already accomplished more than most. He sailed around the islands and down the crystal coast. He grew up fast, oh, he did thrive, had a boat named Cephas at only the age five. He got lonely at sea with only the two, so he pulled into port and captained a crew. So he's trying to find some friends because he's lonely. The men were quite wary or worried at first sight of the cap'n, but fell into line when Jackie began snapping. They pulled up the anchor and fastened the mast. The folks on shore just stared as they passed. What would you do if you saw a ship on, while you were sitting on the beach? Jackie met royalty when he was just eight. Chris Columbus it was who said his directions were great. He quickly became known from shore to shore, and there wasn't a pirate alive who wouldn't carry his oar. So everybody wants to hang out with Jackie. Ooh. At age 12, things got hairy around the Horn of the Cape. LaRue's ship was attacked by Captain Salty the Ape. The ship took fire for a day, maybe two, but Jackie sunk Salty's vessel with a rock that he threw. He rescued survivors and locked up the cap captain, got the boat back to port before his crew knew what had happened. So this big angry ape tried to steal his ship. As time went by, Jackie had urges to hunt treasure and would capture his booty or treasure, no matter the measure. He rescued a chest filled with pure Spanish gold, which was guarded by dragons, as leg legends were told. LaRue picked up a necklace from a mermaid named Bliss, who gave it to Jackie when he promised a kiss. Ooh, I think he likes her. He had coins and chains and jewels of the like. He would capture his prize no matter the hike. And there's the mermaid Bliss. She is pretty. As time went by, Jackie began to feel a weird pain. It started in his toes and then went to his brain. The doctors were puzzled or confused. They didn't know where to start. And before long, the pain went straight to his heart. Jackie talked to gypsies, the witches, the sailors. He talked with bankers, the sheriffs, and jailers. Not one of them knew about a possible cure, so he headed down to port, feeling very unsure. Just when he thought he had lost all his will, he saw an old man sitting just down the hill. As Jackie passed by, he looked at the man, who stood and faced Jackie and stuck out his hand. He wants to meet him. I wonder what he's going to tell him. He said, his name's Elmer, I know who you are. You're Jackie LaRue and you're a big star. I've heard all the stories and read all the papers about your wild escapes and your daring capers. And capers is another word for adventures. There's just one big problem. You're hurting inside. It's really quite clear when I look in your eyes. Look right here, look how sad Jackie looks. Jackie was nervous and he began to sweat. He was sure his disease would get the best of him yet. The man calmly placed his hand over Jackie's heart and said, here's one problem, you're falling apart. Your heart is all hollow with nothing inside, no love, no laughter, only pride. So even though Jackie has everything he could ever want, he doesn't have love. You see, Jackie had not been home in 12 years, no family, no love, and no happy tears. On his quest for adventure, he lost sight of the things that make people whole and give children wings. He needed the love of his mom and his pop, and without them close by, the pain would not stop. The man gazed straight at Jackie and said, listen here, son, get on that ship and make the long run. Back to your home, to your mom and your dad. The advice was the best, better than any Jackie had had. So he's telling him to go home and find the love of your family. Let's see what happens when he gets home. He arrived back home in a couple of weeks, navigating the rivers, the shoals, and the creeks. His mom was right there in the kitchen cooking dinner, and the moment he saw her, he felt more like a winner. They hugged and he cried, and she said, it's all right. We're here for you, Jackie, in the day or night. So even though he's been gone 12 years, his mom is still right there waiting for him. Jackie learned something very important that day, that treasure and fame aren't all that they say. 
You can stack it all up as high as the sky, but it doesn't come close to what money can't buy. The love and support of family is key, even to a boy who is king of the sea. So even though Jackie had everything that he wanted, he still needed love from his family. And that's the lesson that he learned. Okay, friends, what time is it? It's wiggle time. Stand up, stretch out those muscles, get them going. Let's get ready to move with our special guest today. Hey everybody, my name is Coach Brewer and I'm from Lake Forest Elementary where I teach PE. I'm going to go over a quick, easy uh, arm workout that you can do while sitting down. Don't even have to stand up for this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have three different sets. We're gonna have eight, each set has three different parts. Uh, we're going to alternate between our hands straight up, out in front, and to the side. Uh, we're first going to do 10 arm circles. Then we're going to hold our arms in that place. Then we're going to do 10 clenches and unclenches of our hands while holding our hand up. So we're going to start off from the side. We're going to move our hands to the front. And we'll put our hands over our heads. So, ready to begin. Arms out. And we're going to do 10 arm circles and go. And arms out. Hold for 10 seconds. And then just 10 easy clenches and non-clenches, keeping your hands up. Then move your hands up to the front and repeat with some of your 10 arm circles. And hold for 10 seconds. And then 10 easy crunches. And last, put our hands overhead, 10 arm circles. Hold for 10. And then 10 easy crunches. And relax. And that is my easy sitting arm workout. Uh, feel free if you want to at any time. If you want to try this again, uh, increasing the time, increasing the reps. Uh, I typically do this when I'm watching my favorite TV show in between each episode. And also, if I've been, if I've been sitting a little bit longer playing my video games, then I would go ahead and do a quick workout one there just so I can get my body moving. Hope you all enjoy. Thanks. You are not going to believe this, but I just got an email from Jay Annis, the author that we just read. Check it out. My name is Jay Annis. I am the author of Jackie LaRue, Boy Pirate. I live right here in Farmville, and I'm a graduate of ECU. Go Pirates! Many children have enjoyed this book, and I hope you all enjoy it as well. And I hope that everyone is working hard at home, and we're all going to get through this. I wish you all the best of luck, and enjoy Jackie's adventure. See you all. Hi friends, I'm Miss Moore from HB Sugg in Farmville. Um, you just read a book with Miss Madison about Jackie LaRue, and we were thinking that Jackie learned a great lesson about how important family is, and so we were thinking maybe we could do a circle map and write a letter to the author. So Miss Moore has a circle map on the board, and in the middle it says letter to author. So I want you to think about what are some things that we might could ask the author. Something I was thinking about is how did he come up with the character? So I'm gonna write that on my circle map. How? did you come 
up with the character. So think about that for a minute. And then I want you to think about some other questions. If you can write that down on a piece of paper, think of some questions that you might would like to ask the author. And I'm going to show you some more that I've been thinking about too. And you might have the same ones that I did. So on this circle map, you can see how did you pick the character? How did he come up with Jackie LaRue? Is it something, is he like going to the beach? Is he fishing? Is he on boats? Is writing books his regular job? Does Mr. Annis have another job? Or does he just write books? Things that you liked about the book. What did you like about Jackie LaRue? Did you like that he was adventurous? Did you like that he had a parrot? What were some of those things that you liked? Maybe ask Mr. Annis, what are his hobbies? Does he have other things that he likes to do? What's his favorite food? Does he like pizza like you? Does he like hot dogs? What does he like to do? And then next, we're going to actually write a letter to Mr. Annis. And I think I'm going to stick with this one because I want to know how did he come up with that character, okay? Now, when we write a letter, remember we're going to use spacing between our words when we write. And we're going to start with uh, salutation, no, salutation, is that what it is? Yes, I think it is. Ms. Moore's thinking out loud. All right, so I'm going to start with dear Mr. Annis. And if you notice, the letter in his first name, A, is capital. That's because that's his name. Dear Mr. Annis. And I'm going to tell him thank you. I like that he let us read his book today. So I'm going to say thank you. And remember, I'm leaving that space between my words. Thank you for letting. That's a long word. Letting us read your book B -book today. And remember, a lot of these are sight words. You should know those. Let me reread it. Thank you for letting us read your book today. We, I'm starting a new sentence, so it's going to be capital. We enjoyed learning learning about who Jackie LaRue learning about Jackie again his name is capital that first letter right here Jackie LaRue and then I'm going to ask him that question that we came up with how Did you, how did you come up with the character? I'm interested. I want to know how did he come up with Jackie LaRue? Let's read what I've got so far. Dear Mr. Annis, thank you for letting us read your book today. We enjoyed learning about Jackie LaRue. How did you come up with the character? And then I'm going to tell him. I want to hear back from him. Look forward to hearing from you. All right, guys, we're going to reread the letter, make sure that it makes sense. Dear Mr. Annis, thank you for letting us read your book today. We enjoyed learning about Jackie LaRue. How did you come up with the character? Look forward to hearing from you. And let's close it out by saying sincerely, sincerely, and we're going to say friends. All right, guys, at the end of the lesson today of the episode, there's going to be a Facebook link that you can go to, and you can write your own letter to the author, Jay Annis. We enjoy working with you today. Bye-bye. 
I couldn't think of any better way to bring you some positivity today than being able to talk to some of our incredible counselors. Let's go see who's in our counselor corner today. Hi, I'm Miss Davis and I'm the school counselor at Bethel School and I am so happy to be joining you today in the counseling corner. Today we're going to be talking about kind of a big word. We're going to be talking about resiliency. Can everyone say resiliency? Resiliency. So resiliency, while it's a big word, it really just means that when something goes wrong or when we make a bad decision, we're able to bounce back and keep going. Because there's going to be times all of us are going to make bad decisions and things are going to go wrong sometimes. We just have to be able to come back from those moments and get back to making good decisions. So sometimes we're in a good place and we're able to think through things and we're able to make good decisions and we're getting along with everybody and that's when we're in our resilient zone. But sometimes things upset us or things really stress us out, make us anxious or worried. And we might go into our amped up zone. When we're in our amped up zone, we have too much energy. Ooh. And sometimes when we're in our amped up zone, we might do things like wanting to hit somebody, throw things, have a temper tantrum, or even just running away from whatever's going on. Those things don't help us make good decisions. Other times things happen that upset us and we go into our shutdown zone. Oh, when we're in our shutdown zone, we just don't feel like doing much of anything. <sighs> We just kind of feel like maybe just staying on our iPad even though we know we should be doing our schoolwork or we know we should be helping mom with some housework or maybe we just feel like going and laying in bed and doing absolutely nothing. We just maybe feel like we don't even have the energy to get done what we want to get done. But the good news is, is when we get amped up or shut down, we're able to come back into our resiliency zone. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about what happens in our brain when that's happening. So I've got my handy dandy brain puppet. I love to teach about the brain. My kids at Bethel will probably get tired of me teaching about the brain because I love the brain. We're going to start by talking about our survival brain. It's down here in the base of our brain. It kind of connects from the bottom of our brain into our brainstem. And this is the part of our brain that controls our survival and things we don't have to think about. Just like we're breathing, our heart's beating, our food is digesting, and none of us are having to think about that. That's all in our survival brain. And then here in the middle of our brain is our emotional brain. This part of our brain is really important too. This is where our memories are stored so we can remember all those good times we've had with our friends or with our parents. It is also where we control our emotions. When we feel happy, sad, scared, anxious, and tucked tight in here inside of our emotional brain is this little guy right here. It's called our amygdala. Can everybody say amygdala? Amygdala. So our amygdala is super important. It is what tells us if we're safe or if there's danger. Kind of like your smoke detector in your house or your classroom where our smoke detectors are always scanning for smoke to tell us if there's a fire and we need to get out our amygdalas are telling us whether we're safe. The only problem is sometimes our amygdala doesn't work very well. Sometimes it thinks things are dangerous that aren't. Just like if you've ever been at home while mom was cooking and maybe the smoke detector went off when there was no fire, it was just mom cooking dinner, sometimes our amygdala does the same thing. So we've got to learn how to calm our amygdala back down. And up here is our thinking brain. Our thinking brain is where we're able to think through decisions and make good decisions about what's going on. This is where we need to be to learn and to be able to think through things. The only problem is, is when our amygdala thinks we're in danger, it starts sounding that alarm, just like our smoke detector going off. And when our alarm goes off, we flip our lid and our thinking brain no longer works. And we go down here to survival brain. And what do we talk about with our survival brain? We don't have a lot of control over this. It just kind of happens. So we're gonna be learning in the counselor's corner some different things that we can do to calm this amygdala back down and come back into our thinking brain where we're making good decisions. Thank you for joining me today to learn a little bit about your brain. 
Okay, friends, I was just checking my Facebook to see who's maybe been making some submissions and I am amazed. Right here on our page, I was able to see some incredible boxes that you guys made from our lesson the other day from Beryl's Box. Hi, my name is Lucy Myers and I'm a student at Elmhurst Elementary and I built a rocket and in it I'm gonna go to Alpha Tori, a red giant. Hi, my name is Ellie and I go to Elmhurst Elementary School. Um, I made a foosball table and my favorite sport to play is soccer. If you have some things that you want to submit, you can go to at PCSECEC -E and you can submit pictures of your creations or anything that you may have learned from any of our lessons. We'd love to see it and we'd love to share it. So thank you those of you who have already put stuff on. send out a special shout out to the heroic effort to our cafeteria workers. They have served over 250,000 meals since school closed. Um, we've got a very special guest that sent a very special message. Let's take a look at this sweet friend from Northwest Elementary School. Cafeteria lady, thank you for my milk and my uh, other things like my hot dog and my other stuff. Thank you so much for working so hard, too. Love cafeteria ladies. Repeat, love cafeteria ladies. I'm so glad we got to spend this time together on Eastern Carolina Education Connection, and I'm really looking forward to our next episode where we can learn and explore together from right where you are. You can also connect with us on Facebook using the information below. We look forward to seeing you for our next episode.